Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to make a speed handle for the three jaw chuck on my Precision Matthews uh, 1127 lathe. Uh, I've had this lathe for six going on seven years now and one of the first things I did when I got it was make a replacement T handle. The one that came with it had that ever so aggravating ejector spring on it but more so than that, the reason I wanted to, to make my own was that T-handle felt like it come out of a sand mold and didn't have any finish whatsoever on it. It was just very rough. Plus, a T-handle is a simple project that you can do uh, when you first get a lathe and it gives you a little bit of a sense of accomplishment. But ever since I've had that lathe, I wanted to make a speed handle for it. A speed handle like this is what I used more so than all the other tools put together when I was in the Air Force. Uh, I worked with the U2 program uh, and with the R models, we had to take the nose off the camera, if you know a nose off the airplane, to replace the tracker camera, to replace the film in it. If you note on this uh, uh, picture right here, you can see uh, the nose is just a little bit darker than the rest of the plane. That had to come off and was it was held on by, I don't know, some large number of Phillips head screws, about, uh, I don't know, uh, 1020, 1024, probably about an inch apart. And we'd have to take the nose off of the, uh, these uh, planes to replace the, uh, the cameras, the film in the tractor cameras, and then reinstall it just before flight. Uh, they used, we use these little, what we call apex bits. I'm sure you're familiar with them, uh, uh, but they held them on to that. Now that's a little bit more than I want to try to do for the uh, lathe chuck. And I looked all around, and over the years I've seen different examples of them, of uh, things people came up with for speed handles for chucks. But I just uh, saw this picture last couple of days, and I like this, this design uh, as much as any as I've seen before. So we're going to take some material I have laying around here. I've got a piece of, I think this probably started out as one inch material, uh, and then was, I cleaned it up and painted it for some purpose. Don't remember now what it was. But we're going to take a, about a six inch piece of this and make our uh, main body of our speed handle. So let's turn to the lathe now. I've got our work piece in the chuck now. And the first thing we're going to do is I've got it chucked up pretty tight. We're going to face off the end. And to keep from having so much of it, uh, extend it out from the chuck at any given time. I'm going to go ahead and turn this first section, which we want to turn it down for 0.63 inches. So I'm going to zero there. And I'll put my carriage stop in place. None of these measurements on here are really precision. The only thing that needs to be close is the size of the, uh, the square we make on this very end down here, but we'll do that on the mill later. All right, let's get a measurement there. We want to take this down to uh, 0.48 inches. We're at 840. So I'm going to zero out the x axis on the DRO and enter this dimension. We're at 0.841 now, minus what we want, and I said that was 480. 361 thousandths to go. All right, so on the DRO now, I've shown that no, numerous times. Well, what we need to do is just take the DRO down to zero now. All 
Alright, DRO says we got about 41 more thousandths to go. And that's right on the money. Alright, let's put a pretty good chamfer on that since, uh, I could say we're going to carry this over to the lathe, to, to the mill to put our flats on. So we want a pretty good lead in chamfer there. Now we want to pull this out. Let me hit that with the file just a, just a time or two before we take it out. And from this end, we want the we want five inches from the end. All right, that's right on the money. Now we want to take this down to. I'm going to come down to six hundred thirty thousandths for this. These are just numbers that I come up with that look good. I don't know whether y'all saw that or not, but it it kicked out pretty bad. So I'm going to push it back up in the lathe, put a small hole in here so we can hold it with the center. All right, I think we should be able to, to get a center in there now. Okay, now I think we're ready to start cutting. Come out here and touch off again. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. But I came off my center. Obviously folks, this video was not rehearsed. I guess I just didn't have it tightened down good in the truck. Okay. And the speed handle we're, we're making for this truck is not to tighten something down real tight. It's simply to get your jaws, if you're going from a very small diameter piece to a large diameter piece, to get the jaws in that position much faster than you normally would. All right, let's try this again. Not going to take quite as large a cut. I think that painted surface on there was what caused it to slide back into the to the chuck. Okay, now let's get a measurement and see what we need to take off to finish this. That's 809, and we want 630. So we got 178 thousandths to go. And I'm going to try to leave that for that last cut to be 80 thousandths. It's going to take about three cuts to get it down to size. Alright, this part right here, I'm not sure what this material is, or if you can uh, tell the difference in the uh, finish between taking a light finish cut and when I just took like 60 thousandths off there, 
the deeper the cut, it seems to be the finer the finish. And this part, it's hot right now, so I'm not going to touch it. But this part is where I'll be holding it. I said I won't want to touch it, Lee. Holding it with my hand to, to turn the speed handle. So I want that fairly smooth. And by the way, if you notice that this hand seems to be a bit more swollen or a bit swollen and larger than this hand, that little bitty spot right there, I was doing some cord trimming yesterday up, up at my niece's ditch bank at my niece's and got into a ground hornet nest. Thankfully only one of them got me, but he got me right there and he held on tight. I think he pumped every bit of his poison he had in him uh, before I could get him off. Uh, I'm not deathly allergic to to stings, but I don't fare too well with them. I, I'll stay swollen for two or three days now. All right, let's take this down the second pass. And we're going to leave, I said a while ago to leave 80, we're probably going to leave 60 thousandths. That right there will leave 58,000 for the final cut. happy with that finish. Put a little chamfer again on these two edges. Now I want to pull it out just a little bit and clean some of this paint off. And then we'll then I'll carry it over to the bandsaw to uh, to part it. And I know she's going to be plenty warm. Like I say, all I want to do is remove some of this paint. I'll tell you what, while we're right here, we might go ahead and part it off. Let me get me a mark. We want to try to part it since we got the uh, since we got it right here in the chuck. We'll see how this material does. I think before I part it, though, I will put a little emery cloth on it. It's actually a really good finish right there. Okay, let's see how this does. If it wants to chatter too bad, we can take it out and go to the bandsaw. And now would be as good a time as any to put a chamfer on that. In the drink. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's going to be hot. So I'm going to let this cool a bit and then we'll face this end off, turn it around in the truck and face that end off. But in the meantime, let's go over to the vise and see if we can bend us a piece of 3 8 inch rod. All right, I'm over at the uh, uh, Wilton Vice now, and I've got a piece of 3 8 inch coal roll here, and I've put a little mark at about six inches up. So we're gonna we're gonna put that mark just a little above the vice jaws, not quite that much. And we're gonna see if I can heat it 
enough with this hand torch and map gas to uh, to get it red hot and bend it. I've got a forge outside, but I don't have any propane for it right now. I've got a coal forge, forge too, but I really don't want to fire up that stuff and don't want to have to go get any propane if I can get it with this. So this is going to take a while. So let's see if we can get it red hot. I think this map gas is supposed to get like uh, I don't know, three, four hundred degrees hotter than the regular butane gas used in these hand torches. I know the vice jaws are going to soak up a lot of this heat. I think that's pretty close to 90 degrees. Let me get my, uh, see if I see anything close by that's got a 90 degree turn on it. Try to wife's cookie sheet right here. Not sure if you can see it or not. That's just a little bit over 90. Still just a little over 90. Don't want to take hold of it too close. Cause she's still hot. I believe that's about as close as I can get it. Again, hopefully you can see that. Alright, I'm going to let this piece cool off some. Then we'll cut it off down here to whatever this length turned out to be. Looks like it's going to be closer to six and a half inches. I had six inches marked off. All right, I'm back over here on the workbench now, <clears throat> and I've carried this over to the uh, belt sander, belt grinder, and just rounded these ends off a little bit. But what we're going to do now is take the uh, uh, this air sander buffer and polish it up a little bit, and I also got a couple little spots in here, jaw marks. Uh, where, it, where I clamped it in the vise that I need to, to file down or clean up as well. Let's see if we can get them knocked down first maybe. And I had to do just a little bit more tweaking on it. But here it is inside the framing square. And I can't do any better than that. So... If you're wearing earphones, uh, forewarn you, this is going to be a little bit loud, loud enough that I'll wear ear protection, and I'll try to trim the volume down some in the video. A little dip in the sink to cool it off a little bit. Okay, I think this piece is, is handled now, is done. Smooth finish on both sides. So let's turn our focus back to this piece. I'm not going to try to do it on camera, but I'm just going to stick this in the uh, lathe and face this end off. Okay, I've got the workpiece, this part of the workpiece mounted in a uh, 5C collet chuck now in a square block. 
and since we since the drill chuck is already uh, in the uh, mill we're going to go ahead and do the drilling first first thing we're going to do is drill for a 3 8 straight through for the handle to fit in then we're going to stand it up on the end and drill it for a uh, quarter 20 uh, socket head cap screw in this end I'm going to drill that out with a uh, let's see what that 2364 which is a size smaller than the 3 8 and then we'll ream, ream it to the 3 8 let's see before we put that bit in we need to find center Let's slow that down just a little bit. Okay, that kicked off, so we'll zero out the Y axis. Now, Y of one half. And we can lock down our Y axis now, and that'll be our Y for this. all the operations on, the, uh, on this workpiece. All right, zero out the x-axis now. Remember our probe is 200 thousandths, so we'll come in 100, half the thickness of the probe. Zero out again. This was one inch, so we'll come in 500 thousandths now. Icrometer says that everything looks fine. Chuck here on the mill is about worn out, and I know exactly what that's come from, letting these hard taps uh, spin in it. All right, let's put the reamer in now. And this is, this set of chucking reamers I've got, I've got each nominal size, such as 3 8 then I have one that's 3 8 minus a thousandths, and 3 8 plus a thousandths. I'm going with the nominal value now because I think that coal roll was just a few few thousandths undersized anyway. And as I've said probably every time I've used a reamer in a video with a reamer, I like to get in, do my business, and get out. No pecking when it comes to reamers. All right, we've got the y-axis, a good zero on the y-axis. Let's pull this out here. Oh yeah, that's a good fit. All right, now I'm going to stand it up on the end and drill for a quarter twenty. That didn't line up exactly centered on the y-axis even though it was centered on this, but this block is not in the center of the jaws now. It's sitting on those parallels and the jaws are actually tightening up on the nut down here. So I centered the, uh, I put the center drill right on where the lathe made the center mark. So now let's get our tap drill for a quarter twenty. And I always like when I'm tapping in for yeah, tapping in for a um, set screw like this. I always like to 
run the bottom tap through too, just to be sure those last couple threads are cut all the way. Alright, I think we're ready now to uh, <clears throat> put a mill in and cut our flats on that side, so I'll bring you right back. Right, I've got our collet block and workpiece turned around in the mill vise now. Remember we turned this to 480 thousandths. Our hole in the uh, chuck, square hole in the chuck is 400 thousandths uh, each dimension and I checked all three of the holes and they're within a couple thousandths. So we're going to make this 400 thousandths and then I'll, while it's still in the collet block, I'll carry it over to the lathe and test it. Now I've lined my collet block up with this back jaw and I'm going to come down here before I even touch off the length or depth. I'm going to come down here and just get that up to that edge and that is just catching that edge so I will not have to move the x-axis. I've got a half inch in, in mill in and this again was 480 thousandths. We uh, want 400 thousandths. The difference is 84 or 80 thousandths. Uh, there'll be 40 off of each side. So lock down the x-axis now. I'm just going to touch off and zero out my z-axis DRO. Alright, we're going to take 20 thousandths. Then we'll take the other 20. It's leaving just a tiny little burr there, but I can hit that with a grinding wheel afterwards. Alright, so let's take it out. Turn 90 degrees. Line up our collet block with the chuck, with the vice jaw. Come back to 20. Alright, with this still in the collet block, I'm going to go over there to the scotch brite wheel and just knock that little roll burr off right there. Then test this in each of the three holes on the chuck in both directions. If all that works, uh, if it's too tight, I'll come back over here and knock a little bit more off. But in any case, we'll meet back over at the uh, mill or at the lathe. I'll put the uh, two pieces together and we'll get a quick demo. Okay, there's a little bit of assembly required on this that I did off camera, but I think everybody watching this, if you made it this far, you understand uh, what it was I was doing. But the L handle here went in that 3 8 hole that I drilled, and the uh, quarter 20 socket head cap screw used to tighten it down. Now my, my T handle will still be the go-to chuck handle. Uh, I keep it right here within elbows reach, uh, forearm length reach of the chuck. I'll do the same with this. I could could have used a 3 8 inch uh, extension in a power tool of some type to do the quick adjust on the uh, jaws, but I wanted something close by. And this is basically how it'll work. Uh, much faster movable of the movement of the jaws this way than with the T-handle. Also, I made it long enough to reach out in front of the lathe so I can run it like this as well. Again, this is just for those times when I've been working on a small piece and I need to widen the jaws out for a large piece or vice versa. Uh, it's just a rapid way of moving the jaws back and forth. Uh, it was a fun little project to make. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know what this material was, but it sure finished up nice. 
You guys take care, and I'll see you on the next video.